Hey there, ESO community. Today, I'm showing off my newest Magicka Arcanist build. And this one is so amazing, it feels like cheating. The bosses and monsters don't stand a chance against him. This one bar Arcanist goes through mobs like a hot knife through butter. And he's nearly unkillable, so you're gonna love it. Now listen, I don't want to have to hide my builds behind a paywall or a members only thing like some content creators do. So if you want me to keep bringing free builds to YouTube, you gotta subscribe. Nearly 90% of the folks who watch my videos haven't subbed yet. So come on, it's free and you're helping out the channel. Also, you get to see the videos as soon as they're posted. So smash that button right now. On with the show. Now race doesn't matter much for this build. I'm a high elf, but I'd also go with Khajiit or with dark elf. Any race will work just fine though. The Mundus Stone is the lover for extra penetration. All your attribute points go into Magicka. And be sure to take all of your racial passives. Okay, let's move on to the gear. Deadly Strike is the first set. And I know everyone uses Deadly Strike in so many builds. But you know why? It's because it's meta. If you're a content creator like me and you're building a Templar or an Arcanist, Deadly Strike is the first and only choice for gear. The second set can be fun and original, but the first set has to be deadly. Stats. Two items adds 129 weapon and spell. Three items adds 657 crit chance. Four items adds another 129 weapon and spell. And the five piece bonus increases the damage or damage over time and channeled attacks due by 15%. And guess what? Our main damage ability here is a channeled skill. Okay. We're using the Oaken Soul Mythic Ring for the dozen buffs it gives us, including Major Brutality, Sorcery, Prophecy, Savagery, Resolve, and Empower, just to name a few. Also, this Arcanist is an extremely easy to play one bar build. Next, we're equipping the Slime Craw Helm, which adds 771 critical chance, and here I'm going to say that I'm using nearly all lightweight gear. That's because I like the passives on light armor for this build. If you want to equip mostly Deadly Strike on the body, that's fine, but it only comes in medium weight armor, so you're going to need to take those passives instead. Finally, my surprising unorthodox five-piece set is Aurorans Thunder. So Deadly Strike gear you can buy on Guild Traders or get it in Cyrodiil. Aurorans Thunder you need to farm in a very easy dungeon, the Depths of Malatar. Okay, until you get the five pieces or if you don't want to hassle with the dungeon, use the craftable and predictable, dependable Order's Wrath set instead. Here are the stats on Aurorans. Two items adds 1200 health. Three items adds 129 weapon and spell. Four items adds 1487 offensive penetration, which is awesome. And the five piece bonus is this. Dealing direct damage to a target within 10 meters summons a cone of lightning from your chest for five seconds, dealing 400 shock damage every second. It looks completely badass and is a nice compliment to the Arcanist crazy looking abilities. You'll want to gold these items out, have a divine trait on all of them, and a Magicka enchant. For the weapon, I chose a Deadly Strike Inferno Staff with a precise trait and the fiery weapon enchant, which adds 2600 flame damage. It also increases weapon and spell crit by 7%. Lightning Staff here is also a good choice. I picked the Inferno Staff to complement a weird vision buff in Infinite Archives, but I won't send you down that rabbit hole right now. And that's the story of the gear sets. I know some people love Deadly Strike Daggers and Dual Wield, and that's fine, especially if you're building a stamina-based Arcanist, but listen, Arcanist means Spellcaster, and to me, if you're not using a magical weapon like a destruction staff and you aren't using magical abilities, then you're missing the point of the class. But that's just me. Okay, let's talk about skills now. This particular build really started to shine with the advent of scribing in the Gold Road chapter. Why, you ask? Because I was looking for a burst heal. So ESO should be happy that I'm hyping and promoting their new system. The spell we're creating is called Healing Soul. It's made with Wield Soul as the Grimoire, Healing as the Focus, Sage's Remedy as the Signature, and Resolve as the Affix. It gives a burst heal of over 13,000 health, then another 5,000 heal over time, as well as major resolve. Now, if you don't have the ability to make this spell, there are alternatives from the curative runeform skill line, but they're all heal over time spells which are inferior to the scribe spell that I'm recommending here. 
Okay, the next spell is Cephalarch's Flail, which we'll now just call Flail. And it's a stamina spell that sends out a tentacle, dealing 7,000 damage and immobilizing the enemy. It also gives us a little heal, but most importantly, it builds Crux. Now we want to cast this three consecutive times for maximum crux. And when you see those three beautiful green triangles circling you, you hit them with Prismatic Fate Carver. Now Fate Carver is our main damage spell. And what makes this build work? It's a channeled ability, so we get a 15% boost from our deadly gear. Now as a base, Fate Carver does 12,000 damage every 0.9 seconds. With three crux up, this increases another 99%, so 33% per crux. Add that 15% from deadly, and we're increasing our 12,000 damage a second by 114%, or another 13,500. So yeah, enemies just evaporate because we're dealing 25,000 damage a second. Honestly, you could run this tune on just these three spells. Flail, Fate Carver, and Healing Soul. Everything else is flexible. I slotted Recuperative Treatise as the fourth spell. It increases class abilities, does some magic damage, restores magic for added sustain, and it can generate crux. Fifth, I picked a damage over time spell, the Rune of Displacement. This ground placed rune will pull enemies in and deal 21,000 damage over 18 seconds. It also has a good synergy when you're playing with others. For the ultimate, we're using Tide King's Gaze. This amazing looking spell deals 10,000 damage every second for 8 seconds and it follows the target around. It's probably the best ultimate in the game. Okay, things we haven't covered yet. Food is Bewitched Sugar Skulls. The potion is the Purple Tristat. For passives, all your racial passives as I mentioned before, all your class passives, and all the light armor passives. The last three of those are super valuable. Spell Warding, which gave me over 4,000 spell resist. Prodigy, which gave me 1,300 weapon and spell critical. And Concentration, which gave me a whopping 5,600 physical and spell penetration. Another reason the enemies die so quickly. The slotted champion points are as follows. The Blue Warfare Tree, Arcane Supremacy, Wrathful Strikes, Thaumaturge, and Untamed Aggression. In the Red Fitness Tree, Boundless Vitality, Fortified Rejuvenation, and Siphoning Spells. In the Green Craft Tree, Homemaker, Master Gatherer, Plentiful Harvest, and Steed's Blessings. For those of you who like to keep up on the ESO webpage for news, apparently this month we're getting spoopy. But if Zoss could spell things correctly, names wouldn't be so ridiculous in our game, right? Also, it looks like we're going to grind enough to earn our three prizes in the Fallen Leaves of Westweald. So congrats to all who participated in the newest event. As always, I'm Marco. Have a spoopy time playing ESO. Be kind to other players and keep exploring.